Moldex exhibition is one of the uh, largest exhibition for uh, molding uh, tool, all those tool room uh, technologies uh, in uh, Stuttgart. And it is organized by Mrs. Stuttgart and they have brought Moldex India, the first ever exhibition organized by Mrs. Stuttgart India. And we are uh, here with uh, Shijesh Kokodan who is exhibiting from uh, Macro Technologies. You are based out of uh, Bangalore, right? Yes. So Shijesh, basically you are into dyes and molds. Yeah, we are into uh, injection molds. We can manufacture plastic injection mold and also molded parts. Okay. And the same thing with the press tools. We can manufacture progressive dyes and sheet metal components, both will be. Okay. So how many years uh, you are in this uh, business? We have started in the year 2010 with the very basic machines in the plant, maybe one or two machines. And uh, myself and my colleague Badman Abel, we two have first started this company. And we, we were working and we were in fact to work with operators there. And slowly we have built up our contacts through our previous companies, contact uh, and a lot of things have happened. And progressively we started investing on uh, our in-house capability along with our supply capacity. So slowly we have made uh, this kind of work. And one of the specialities we concentrate on precision modes, which is very, very critical. And uh, that is something which, which is special about Macro. We can attempt any complexity in terms of uh, dimensions. And uh, that is the accuracy which you are seeing in this uh, part that you see here. It uh, may not be that complex in geometry, but precise in nature. Very precise in terms of assembly requirements. So that is what we do. When I hear about injection molding, the first thing what it come in my mind is automotive because that is very strong. But the kind of parts what you have displayed, as you rightly told, it is a little bit different. It is maybe the critical item, small, small dyes, uh, uh, injection molding, and it's very, 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 yeah, very, very tiny thin, parts. Yeah, it's, it's one mm sheet thickness. Yeah, so one millimeter. Where, where basically, uh, who are your client base? You know, what are the, which are the industries you basically? We, uh, even even in automotive, we our business share is uh, from automotive is about 60%. So, uh, major customers in the OEMs and we are tired too for uh, Maruti, Honda, uh, I mean uh, Toyota, all these uh, companies. And we supply to our tier 1 uh, customers and uh, these are the kind of uh, parts which they use into automotive, and mainly on switches and uh, wiring harnesses, protectors and all these fuse boxes. So we are in dimensional criticality and also the complexity is very important. So we are having with uh, Vinod, yeah. Mulla Sherila and Shijesh and Vinod is having something in common. Both are from Kerala yeah. and both are graduated from NTTF yes. and both worked in uh, one company, one Tyco, company, yeah, earlier. Tyco Electronics. And now both are entrepreneurs. One thing what Vinod is doing is help uh, Indian manufacturers, especially MSMEs, to build the capabilities in digital manufacturing, help them to bring their productivity more. So, as a manufacturer, as a mold manufacturer, great uh, a friend is there, but still, how do you think, how important it is to bring this digital manufacturing technologies and how it helps you? See, when we started our organization, when it was uh, just about maybe uh, three or four crores kind of a turnover, and having a team of about 20 or 25 people, it is, it is not a, that much complexity in terms of managing. So later when you uh, escalate your turnover or escalate the business and interact with much more uh, customers, you have a lot of modes, a lot of uh, situations wherein you don't precisely uh, calculate each and every uh, thing in the, in the factory. So, and also, also as a current uh, situation, people are also not that disciplined like olden days and people want like a report and these kind of things to monitor what is happening in the industry. So that is where we really feel that some kind of a digital information is needed from the company. So, but you have those systems in many other industries, but in tool rooms or in a production facility, it is, it is very rare. So that is where we have decided or looking for something new. And uh, since I know, we know we are also closely interacting. So that is where this has come up. And now this is already getting implemented uh, with us. And how, how you find it uh, helping you? Very easy because uh, this was even during the development, uh, I think it was a very close uh, interaction uh, with Vinod. And uh, whatever like a common man facing kind of a trouble, like okay, it's an ERP, it's a bigger platform, but how can you make that so easy in terms of operating so that your operators, your other manager level people understand this in a better way so that rather than a software which is installed in a system, we should be able to utilize this properly, which is resulting into our uh, final aim in profitability, these kind of things. That's great. We know the, the question is to you, 
and uh, you had this mission of uh, empowering MSMEs. Yes. Be it a friend or not, that you also, I believe, you know, bought the pop, you know, uh, to test your products maybe with your friend, and you can be very happy because he is feeling so, uh, you know, happy that you know there is some productivity happens. Absolutely. Yeah. There can be a bit of uh, more awareness needed. Yeah. Ignor ignorance can come and play a big thing when we talk about digital because nowadays we are all digitally very strong because we use mobile, we use uh, different apps. But when it comes to managing a production, managing productivity through digital manufacturing is something still I believe we are challenged with mm -hmm. but we are not aware of. Absolutely. Sometimes we may go with some ERP system and it failed. Maybe many reasons but now you even you bring out with a very simple and advanced uh, technology which you learned uh, through your 20-25 years of global ex experience how you find the acceptability of this in the Indian manufacturing yeah that's a very good question Harry uh, just to add um, there is one more common thing between us he's for passion for engineering and I'm passion for manufacturing <laughs> so that passion is there so over over the years uh, we were of course friends colleagues and then um, when we started this project to build India, the first one whom I contact was Shijesh because they are coming up and uh, they, they have a, as you know, the, the, the growth and the appetite was there. So that's a place where we wanted to build something which is going to be a reflection of the entire industry outside. That's where we uh, started interacting. And um, as you rightly said, there are two big challenges we are facing. One is the uh, the fear of cost, okay, that is what I am facing. Next is the fear of technology. These are the two fears which we need to eliminate because technology perspective, we, yeah, you can go around and see a lot of technologies, but when it comes to adapting that technology into my my shop floor, that's where people fear. That's the first thing. Then next thing is many ERP systems in the market got failed because of so many reasons. Yeah could be commitment, it could be complexity or any such reasons. But what we are trying to do is, the cost factor, we are, we are, we are, cut, you know, cutthroat on the pricing topic. We are not bothered about the pricing. Instead, what we are bothered is to build an ecosystem for manufacturing. And that's where, uh, you know, it's a good, very good example, like a world-class tool room, like a tool room and machine uh, production center like Macro, if they are using I'm sure every company in India can use these kind of products. See, you touch upon two important points, you know. See, I, I the, the, the fear of course what you told, it is not fear of course, it is somewhere which is very deeply inside India's uh, cultural belief system. If you remember that Kawasaki ad or Suzuki ad, mm -hmm. which came before 20 years, a Japanese going and, you know, talking and, and, and we are all talking about the mileage. Yeah. Right. You take a BMW, you talk uh, uh, a big car, the first question is how much mileage it gets. So, we are set on that. So, that is the cost factor, you know. Sometimes Indian manufacturing is also sometimes not even in, in the entire market. So, we find out a product. So, what is the price? 100. So, next question is can I get for 20 rupees? Yeah. So, the interest is that I got 80 rupees discount. This 20 rupees product is not actually it is a bad resource or it is a bad investment but sometimes people get that okay I got 80 rupees discount so but I think that is changing mm, that is changing people are thinking about value driven system because we are getting business now but the real problem is how to overcome so awareness is something what we need to do. exactly but fear of technology is there because everyone needed to go there were so many ERP system I believe India is not just an ERP system I think it is, it is not an ERP much system. beyond that it is beyond an ERP system exactly. uh, and I think we need to talk more about that later but then I would like to come back again to Shijesh uh, this is the first time uh, Moldex India is coming here this is the first step a German manu uh, you know exhibition organizer have taken a step and I believe it's a brave step because I have seen many German companies are coming and investing in India for me uh, Mr. Stuttgart coming is a very uh, positive sign. What's your take by, take on this? You know, you are here for last two, three days. Yeah, see, it is a, a good opportunity for even tool makers. And uh, from, uh, apart from this, I'm also an executive council of TACMA, where, you know, MSME, we are trying in a uh, big way to, I mean, educate uh, other industrial uh, people about the, uh, I mean, whatever we know this, uh, talking about. And uh, one more major factor what we have to see here is, 
in my experience more than 50% of the msme people do not have any idea about expense and revenue how much are spending and how much are getting this calculation is missing with many people and they don't realize it because of the advances coming in for tool development and other things so by the time they realize this kind of shortfall in your business it is 3 or 4 or 5 years time and it is not correctable very easily so this fundamental thing can happen by having a detailed cost breakup how much you are spending i even tell my with some of my colleagues at least you should know how you are recovering the coffee you, you are giving to your customer so only that is the revenue stream for you but you don't check on these facts you run a company because you just started because with your passion just like that you don't connect the business in it so this missing link has to be educated with others and then only it can grow and once that is changed then it is then you can compete with china or in any other country it is because that capability is there in the country but this missing element is very very important so being in tagma also uh, we are trying to share this across the people and uh, maybe maybe collecting everybody's view and then trying to work out so that we can do something to the uh, country so and I, i also think message should cut coming to india as you spoke about tagma i have a very strong uh, feeling that you know uh, tagma as a one of the biggest uh, representative of uh, tool makers in india can have more international collaborations and get the members uh, exposure maybe yes, take yes. them to message stuttgart and i'm sure that they will be very open for these kind of collaborations and uh, you know then shijesh uh, both of you thank you very much for yeah. sharing your time i thank wish you. you all the very best yes yes thank you thank you very much